Oh, it's electric truck. That's awesome. I thought it was a, a gas, so this is probably half. What impresses me the most is to see again the level of automation and how robots are the only things are par taking part of this. So let's go faster again. We can reach maybe 80 kilometers per hour. Apparently can't. This is a huge, massive electric truck. The automobile industry in China has been the largest in the world measured by automobile unit production since 2008. Since 2009, annual production of cars in China accounted for more than 32% of worldwide vehicle production, exceeding both that of the European Union and that of the United States and Japan combined. we're visiting today Daiyun Motors. This is uh, one of the cars factory located here in Yuncheng city in Shanxi province. This production line is huge and it's quite silent but you can kind of feel the vibration of what is happening inside. We saw the, like an assembly line. There are huge huge pressing machines kind of making some of the parts of the car that we're going to see in the next level. I'm just impressed of the level of automation that these factories are working with right now just robust basically inside there's only one person in the back checking the process through the cameras and in this huge box behind me that's where everything is happening right now at the end of the line people are getting it and separating i think by type because they're assembling different parts of the cars in this uh, line Daiyun is a private enterprise integrating automobile R&D, production, sales and service. Daiyun has a full range of automobile production qualifications. This base produces heavy trucks and new energy vehicles. I'm going to try the gloves because before they approve these parts, they need to double check and make sure there's no any detail or any kind of mistake or malformation in any part. This is of course, as you can see, a door of one of the models of the cars that are being assembled here. China continues to be the world's largest vehicle market by both annual sales and manufacturing output with domestic production expected to reach 35 million vehicles by 2025. And in this area, you can see they're kind of storing all the parts. You have hundreds, hundreds of parts that are gonna be part of all these models. They haven't shown us yet the models they are making here. I hope at the end we're going to get to see the final product. This is kind of a surprise because we start from the beginning, but we don't know exactly what models they are uh, making here. They're manufacturing in this uh, factory. China auto market is booming right now and you have no idea how many brands you can find in the streets of the big cities of China. They are making electric cars, regular gas cars, and it's incredible to see the development of these cars. They are making very, very good quality vehicles here in China, and at some point, they will go to the global market. China's automobile market has attracted many well-established foreign brands to invest in automobile production in the country. However, most foreign brands were only allowed to produce their vehicles in China by establishing joint ventures with domestic automobile manufacturers, which the government has recently announced plans to loosen gradually. And right behind me is where the magic starts happening. They are putting together all the different parts that were making in the previous station. And judging by the size of this car, it looks like an, probably an SUV. What impresses me the most is to see again the level of automation and how robots are the only things that are par taking part of this fabrication process. Of course, there will be a few people double checking and inspecting the process, but in general, mostly you can see just robots doing the dirty job. This is happening in most of the industries in the modern era where mostly robots or machines are the ones who are taking part 
of the manufacturing, the fabrication of the different products. You can see those robotic arms in the back. They are right now assembling the different parts of the car. The even small, small parts of the cars are being made by these robots. Chinese consumers can choose among a wide range of cars and brands. In 2022, 17.8 million cars produced in the country were passenger vehicles. Despite the huge number of produced vehicles, the number of Chinese drivers is even bigger. In 2021, mainland China counted for over 443 million drivers. The reason of such a mismatch between the demand and the supply can be traced in the Chinese car culture. In the country, the car is seen as a status symbol, so not every people who has a license can afford to buy an actual vehicle. In addition, since 2011, obtaining a car has become more difficult in China, in part due to the implementation of car plates lottery. Most big cities have implemented this initiative to reduce the number of cars on the streets, releasing a limited amount of license plates per year. In 2022, Beijing offered 100,000 car plates, of which only 30% were for fuel vehicles, while 70,000 were for EVs. Moreover, registration fees are extremely high. In 2022, the cost of a car plate in Shanghai was around 92,500 renminbi, which is around 14,000 US dollars. As a result, drivers are usually not very young. In 2022, those aged between 21 and 31 years old accounted for 27% of the total car buyers while the main consumer group is from 31 to 40 years old, representing 40% of the total drivers. Well, apparently not 100% of the manufacturing process is made by machines. We have some people here actually doing more than just inspecting. He's actually taking some parts and put them together with other parts in order to make the final vehicle. We have two technicians here doing their job. I would say like 80% of the job is made by these huge robots who are in charge of assembling most of the parts of the cars. It's like an oven inside. The cars are coming out from that part with a more real shape. Now we're getting to see kind of the final shape that the cars will have after all the parts are being put together, going to different station for inspection. As you can see, these people are inspecting some of the different stages of this car. we came to another building remember this is a huge factory so you definitely need a huge space to go through the different stages that requires to make a car from the ground from scratch and here in this second stage you get to see part of the car already went through the painting process and here they're putting all like the different plastic parts on the top on the back on the seats but this part is mostly made by, by people. You can see some technicians working uh, in the motor part and putting the different uh, accessories by themselves. It's not a robot, although this is like an assembling line where all the cars are being moved by this transportation belt and taking from one end to the other until all the products and all the parts are being put on the car. We're finally getting to see the final product. They are being 100% assembled here. And you can see there is a driver inside already taking them to what I assume is the final inspection to make sure all the places or the different parts of the vehicle are on their place. There is a person underneath that car making what it looks like the final inspection for maybe the wheels or the motor or the underneath of the car. While most of the cars manufactured in China are sold within China, exports accounting for 11.5% of the total production reach 3.11 million units in 2022, making the country the world's second biggest car exporter. China's home market provides its automakers a solid base, and Chinese economic planners hope to build globally competitive auto companies that will become more and more attractive and reliable over the years.
So we are right about to drive the Dayun Yuehu. This is a small compact electric car. It's quite hot outside. We need to turn the aircon on. Wait, I need my shades. Style, style first. It's safety and style. Feels quite responsive, although it feels more like a gas car. I drive a Tesla and when you press the gas pedal, it will push you. If you stop pressing this pedal, it will slow down. This one seems to be more like a gas car. It's not pressing the gas pedal and it's still going on. It's not slowing down. So we're going to pass. This is uh, like a race course and she's also going faster. <laughs> she's not gonna let me overpass her. <laughs> Okay, we reach 80 kilometers per hour in that uh, straight area. So let's go faster again. We can reach maybe 80 kilometers per hour. Apparently can't. Ah, uh, this is fun. Woo! This is a very close curb. Now let's try the other vehicle that is ready for our test. This is more like an SUV. This one feels steadier, definitely more robust. This is a bigger car. Of course you have more space. This is like a, yeah, a seven seat car. You can see here the whole family, as you can see in the back. This is the kind of car I like. I like to have more space to carry all my stuff. And now we're going to take a look to the big truck. They also make trucks. Oh, it's a bouncy seat. You have all you need. You probably have a, even a bed on the top and a bed in the back. You can see. Here we have all this space to sleep comfortably. Very comfortable, very modern. You have a lot of storage compartments here to storage all your documents, maybe your computer or whatever you need as a truck driver. I didn't know these kind of trucks were so spacious. This is a right? Oh, it's electric truck. That's awesome. I thought it was a, a gas. So this is a, probably have some quite huge electric cells or electric batteries to power up this huge thing. This is a huge, massive electric truck quite impressive i don't think there's any other brand that is already currently making electric trucks but this brand is definitely going to give some topics to talk about Feel. 